Hey everybody, Jeff Reinhardt here, coming to you from McCaskey. Welcome to the LL Football Roundtable, another season, 2022 ready to go. Thank you to our new sponsor, Bobby Rahal Lexus. Thank you very much for that. Uh, getting ready for all things week one. Don't forget, 13 Berks County teams coming in this year, making it a 37-team league. Should be fun. We're going to try and keep up. Okay, week one interviews. Here we go. We're at McCaskey. We're going to start off with Ben Thompson. Second year McCaskey coach, first as the full-time coach. He was here as an interim last year. He got the full-time gig this past offseason. First of all, how good does that feel? Got the job now. You're not the interim guy. That, that tag is gone. Feels great. It shows that the school, the district, the players, the parents, they have faith in what we're doing here and what we're trying to build. So I do appreciate that. Talk about camps. How did they go? HEDAC uh, and first week of training camp leading up to scrimmage. What did you like? What did you see? How do you feel going into week one? Uh, truthfully, the only thing that was different was the date on the calendar. I mean, these kids have been working hard since November of last season. So the weather got colder, the weather got warmer, but they haven't changed. They've been consistently at practice, working hard, and we're looking for big things this season. You've been here forever. Can I check your ID? <laughs> Seriously, man. You've been in this offense now, what, three, four years. How comfortable are you with this offense? I'm sure you know it like the back of your hand, and are you excited for your senior year? Yeah, I'm beyond excited, you know. The offense comes very familiar. It's like a second nature to me. I'm um, doing it four years now, and it was really exciting for the year ahead. You guys got a couple wins last year. You broke a losing streak, which everybody could exhale finally. Uh, talk about some other positives, even though you lose some guys to graduation. Talk about some other positives you guys took from last year. You know Coach Thompson's voice now. He's in the program. What were some positive things you took into the end of the offseason that you'll really use here? Uh, definitely Coach Thompson's philosophy. We took him to the offseason with being read, respectful, educated, and disciplined. We really applied that in the entire offseason at the Millersville camp, going into our personal camp and then the scrimmage. You know, really keep the trash talk to a minimum, just play our game. You were DN last year, and now you're switching back to linebacker. Tell me about that transition. How's it going? Either way, you're going to make a ton of tackles and chase guys all over the place on Friday nights. But how's that switch for you, and are uh, you comfortable? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really comfortable. I uh, one, Like, one of my best friends is the other linebacker with me, Xavier Gates, so I it's nice, you know, he persuaded Coach to bring me back there. But it's, a, it's way different than, than DN because I have to think a lot more. I have to react faster, and it's not just, you know, bull rush straight ahead. So, But it's, it's been a good I'm, – I'm having a lot of fun at linebacker. So, Unfortunately, your week one game against John Bartram, which is a really cool opponent out of Philly Pub, Saturday was supposed to be played at Villanova, which would, been a, would have been an awesome experience for you and your kids. But it's not going to go down there. It's going to be played at Bartram in Philly. Uh, break them down a little bit. What do you know about Bartram? What are you learning about Bartram? And are you disappointed you're not going to get to play at Nova on Saturday? Uh, as long as not getting to play at Nova, it would have been a great experience for our kids. But honestly, as long as we get to play football, I don't care if it's in a park, in a stadium, wherever it is, we're, we're, we're happy to play football. Uh, I just found out today the last time we played John Bartram was 75 years ago. Wow. Yes. Thanks to uh, John or Tom Goodhart, our equipment guy and coach. So uh, they're a storied program just as we are. They won the pub last year, so we're looking for a good game. I would say they're comparable to us as, size, as far as the amount of players, what we look like, stuff like that. So it should be a like swap on the field. Uh, the things we have to do to be successful is be consistent. We got to do everything right the first time, no second chances. So just playing within ourselves, doing what we have to do, staying within our jobs, and we should be successful. All right, thank you, Ryan, and thanks to the folks from McCaskey. As you can see, we're back in the studio. Uh, my name is Mike Gross, and the two gentlemen who are the primary cover guys, not cover corners, but cover <laughs> writers for high school football for LNP, LancasterOnline.com, John Walk, seated to my left, Jeff Reinhardt, who you've already seen at yes. Fabulous McCaskey. There you go. Seated to my right, we're going to break down the first week of the season, which is almost here. We're just about a couple of days away from Friday Night Lights. Are you psyched, Grant? I am a little tired. I'm like up to here already. I kind of figured this 37 team thing would be like 
very time consuming as it and it has been but uh, i think we're all ready to go now yes john game face yeah by the time yeah. i did the tab overview in the league uh, this time a week ago i was like all right let's go i know it's let's still go. 10 more days but i'm kind of jacked up to let's get kicked go. off it's yeah. funny how that works you know you yeah. you're it's i came it's so far and then oh whoa I'm, now i'm ready for it I, yeah. we're ready for it all yeah. right we thought we would take a look at a couple of games, maybe a little bit of an overview, but really a couple of games because the simple reason with our expanded league, which you may have heard about. I hope so. There are 28 games <laughs> this weekend, 28 uh, that we're going to try to cover. Uh, all of them are very, very close. 25 on Friday night and three of them on Saturday. Mm. We're going to look at a three, a three that we think are kind of uh, significant. Let's start with uh, John Walk's alma mater, the Penn Matter Comets, right. against hey. Jeff Reinhardt's alma mater, the Conestoga oh, Valley Bucks. Right. A little side wager right. going on here. All right. Wow. Okay. It's an emotional matchup <laughs> no, for the is. two scribes. Right. Um, I think Penn Manor is one of the few teams in the league that we can look at and say, hey, they have, they have numbers coming back. They have a lot coming back. Sure. Did they have a chance to surprise you? What do you think? Well, five and five last season, first non-losing season since 2014. So first time in seven years, it took uh, Coach Brew there a little while to get it yeah. going, as he said, to build up that culture. And oh, by the way, yeah. they didn't really have much of a weight room these last three years with oh. the construction in the new high school. Um, yeah, coming off a of five and five year, 16 starters back, eight on defense. They mm. return their quarterback, top three receivers. Um, running back room is deep, but a little bit kind of wet behind the ears. And I believe they have like three or four returning. They have three returning alignment and the other two started on the D line last Played, year. Yeah. So the pieces are in place, yeah. mm -hmm. the culture's in place. And it sounds like the mindset when I was out there talking to him a couple of weeks back of, Hey, we know we we're five and five, but we we're one and four in section one. Those four losses were all pretty lopsided mm. to the Hemfields, Wilson's townships. So they want to, you know, get off to a good start here yep. with week one against CV. I got to say, I, I favor Penn Manor a ton on this, uh, just kind of given what's going on at CV mm. and, and kind of the fresh faces that they have on that side. Yeah. Don't forget Cedar Crest too. We got and, and by the way, we should mention yeah. um, probably a factor that we'll probably talk about here. And again, I know he doesn't want to be mentioned. Former LS coach, John Mannion. Oh yes. Back on the sidelines after what, a year away? A year away. Um, and he's, when I ran into him out at the weight room, he, brings me off to the side, hey, the less you could talk about me, the better, I don't <laughs> want any credit. So that's kind of the humble dude that he is. But yeah. all that is to say, he's kind of helping out their new offensive coordinator, um, whose name is Joel Boas. This is number one year for him as the O coordinator, worked his way up through kind of their youth football program, was an assistant the last few years. And yeah. Well, CV is a much yeah. different situation than Penn Matter. Yeah, Let's sadly. Talk a little bit sadly. about what's going on there as they yeah, yeah, yeah. the season. Right? Tough off season for CV. I think the good news, or you know, a good story was John Sapansky taking over as head coach, replacing Jared Novak, who had a storied yep. career for CB. Uh, Tyree Smith and uh, Tyler Zook, a couple of players for CB, classmates, teammates, uh, died this summer in that awful car crash in East Lampeter, uh, which was just a shocker and a, just a tragic story. So the guys are kind of playing for them this year. So Sapansky's coming over from Northeastern New York. He's a Solanco guy, played quarterback for the Mules, was an assistant with CB for a couple of years. So he knows the area, he lives in Lancaster. Um, so those guys will get a lot of inspiration and some motivation playing for their fallen friends. Uh, some familiar faces back for CB. McCoy Nicely's back at quarterback. He played as a freshman a little bit, started as a sophomore. He's good. He's, He's good, good player. Yeah. Good player. Uh, Nick Tran is a good running back. Good yep. yep, he can dart and slither and get into spaces. 700-yard kid last year missed a couple of games with an injury, but he's back. Uh, they need to replace some kids up front. Just one returning starter on the O line. It's got to be a familiar theme this year. for a lot, a lot of teams. Jankowski's back on the on the edge. Uh, Robbie Swift's back at linebacker. He's a kid you'll have to watch. But interesting game for both teams because I think there's going to be a lot. Uh, the atmosphere is going to be. There'll be a lot in the air on Friday night over at CV. I'm sure they're going to honor those those guys. Uh, we, we have a lot of um, far-flung matchups in these non-conference games. Games against Philadelphia, games against, yeah. in some cases, teams from uh, not even in Pennsylvania. But 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 these three that we're going to talk about are in yeah, the local, LL. And, all and, local games. Uh, next up, we're going to go with Warwick. <laughs> And Cocalico, a couple of programs Ooh. that have been very successful oh, yeah. of late. 
Yeah. Break um, this one down. Yeah, Cocalico and Warwick, former Section 2 foes. Warwick's 2-1 and one in the last three meetings, including the 2019 District 3 Class 5A semis, which Warwick led 10-0 at the half. And Cocalico came back and won. Got them to the finals, and then the Eagles yeah, won the district title the last surprised. week. Yeah. And that's yeah, and then well, that sort of sort of kickstarted Warwick into the next season when right. they were really good right. with Rucci yeah. and all those guys. Uh, interesting game here. Uh, Warwick loses some skill kids, but Jack Reed's back at quarterback, twenty four hundred yard passer last year. He's really good. A couple new skill kids around him. A couple new guys up front. Harmon McKnight is a kid you need to know on defense. I think he's poised for a big season, stopping people. Uh, Cocalico, new quarterback, Josh Meyer, hello. Lose some studs, Ryan Brubaker, Jared Stauffer, Anthony Barassa, et al. There's, those guys are gone. But some good skill kids back. Um, Longenecker's a kid you need to know. Epinette's a kid you need to know. Um, and just enough guys back on the line, Tucker, et cetera, Ch uh, Chucky Drain. Chucky who are, who are Drain. Be Chucky Drain, who are going to be pretty good. Uh, Cocalico needs a hot start because they have that Section 4 schedule coming up in a couple of weeks, which will be really tough. Um, Cocalico yeah. might have the toughest section in our of anybody. Yes. I mean, the toughest schedule, I'm sorry. Yes. The toughest schedule overall. Yeah, I said this the other the night. The non-conference and been, the conference. Yeah, they play yeah. Warwick, Solanco, which will be good, yeah. and Mannheim Central. And Those they're in Section three. 4. Right. Plus and section we'll four. talk about Section 4 a time later on oh, in the year, yes. but I totally agree with you on that side. And Warwick on the other side, yeah, yeah. they need to win this one too because it's the first of eight, eight. away games yes. at the very least, Yes. Um, given what's going on with the renovation at Grosh Field, adding a new field house yeah, and all that's that right. stuff. Yep. Look for that story in Wednesday's paper, by the way. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of teams that I think, there's a lot of teams in this league that – have lost a lot, have been traditionally successful of late, yes. have lost a lot, and is the sort of momentum of the program gonna carry them forward? I think both of these teams are in that category. Agreed. I think LS is in that category. Yeah, yes. I, 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 I can't think off the top of my head, there's several others, but that's a theme, I think, for both of these and for Agreed. some others. Absolutely. Speaking of Lampeter Peter Strasburg, Yes. Milk jug. That Milk brings jug. us to our third and final featured matchup yes. of the show. <laughs> LS and Salenko. Yeah, nice backyard rivals there. Yeah. Uh, Milk John, jug. John, your S thoughts. Salenko, three wins last season, but they bring back a ton. One of the more experienced oh, yeah. rosters across the league. We know that they like to run the ball. And their uh, what triple option they have. Their quarterback returning. They have a scat back. They have a strong O-line. They need a fullback. That's the key to their offense that takes up a lot of those carries and kind of keeps mm -hmm. it, it moving a little bit. Lampeter Strasburg reached a District 3 final each of the last three years, came in with two district crowns. Um, they have four returning O-linemen on offense. As we know, the one departed Nick Del Grande is now Coastal Carolina, Pretty but good. four back. Yes. Uh, but they do need a new quarterback replacing Berkeley Wagner. They need a new tight end replacing Bill Heiser. I believe they need like all new receivers, uh, new running back. But Again, that's a program that program. seems to the last yeah. five years kind of reload and keep going. Yeah. And given yeah. the fact, you know, they've made deep postseason runs these last three years, I'm yeah. sure a lot of those backups have seen that and have gotten ready for this stage. So it's kind of a, a question mark for LS that I think we're going to see a lot of answers come out of them, uh, the pioneers. Yeah. And I don't really know who to favor in this one. LS has won the last three years. Solanco last one in 2018. What do we say here, Jeffrey? Yeah, it's, well, Solanco and Penn Manor are the two teams, I think, that were middling last year, but a lot coming back and maybe an opportunity to be a sleeper. I think more so Solanco because of the section they're in. Oh, sure. Section right. three is wide open. Yeah. And when I did the prediction column, I literally had to write a sentence that said, I hated picking the last place team here because you could literally take seven teams out of a hat and make an argument for any of them to win section three. But you picked Solanco. I picked Solanco. And I think I think I I think I would have picked them too. I, I I understand why. That that's perfectly logical. Yeah. Yeah, they have twenty six seniors. Yeah. That's 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 a goodly amount. Other random notes on that game. LS leads nine three in the series. Do not know who the LS quarterback is yet. I haven't really poked around depth charts with three three days to go before the season. Hunter Hildenbrand and uh, Trent Wagner were up for the QB spot at LS. Wagner is Berkeley's little brother who was the quarterback last year, and that kid can run. He can run the option and get to the corner and fly. Hildenbrand's a really good wide out DB kid. 
We shall see. He was at media day carrying a football around, so maybe he got the job. I'm not quite sure yet. He's the senior. We shall see. Before camp started. Clear yeah, <laughs> Clear you know. Trying to send a message. Right. I guess. Um, that's a fun. That's a fun game, and I think. I think for Solanco, if they can just be in it, they haven't beat LS in a couple of years, like you said, but if they can be in it and make a good showing and get some mo going towards that section three, look Four out. wins last year, haven't been great for a couple of years, no. but I've played good people tough they have. pretty often. They always do. Yeah. They yeah. always do. All right, those are those are the three that uh, those are the three that we're gonna feature, but we're also we're we're each gonna cover a game. So let's talk about that. Ryan's where are you going this weekend? Well you're covering money. Uh, I'm all over the place. Wow. Um, okay, Friday night. A little road trip. I'm gonna go to Westchester. Mannheim Central plays Westchester East, which is a new opponent for the Barons. They were two and eight last year, have to replace their quarterback. Central should be really good. A ton back on defense. They're loaded there. Barons at Westchester East on Friday night. Saturday, bummer for McCaskey. McCaskey was supposed to play Bartram at Villanova University, which would have been awesome. Cool stadium on this campus. This is John Bartram High School, which is John in the Philadelphia Bartram. Public League. Yes. Yeah. That uh, venue got scrapped at the last minute. McCaskey just found out like Monday afternoon that they're so not going to play. So now you've got to find John Bartram. Now I got to go to Bartram, which is in, on 67th Street in Philadelphia. Nah, but apparently it's a cool complex and, this, and the, the stadium has its own little address across the street. So Saturday I will be at McCaskey at Bartram. So two games for you. Check me online. I'll get you updates. And Better that Saturday as opposed to rush hour traffic on I-95 yeah. on yeah, Friday. That's doable. So, yeah, yeah. That's uh, I will be at Cumberland Valley which is opening their new vastly renovated stadium, which is going to be the site of the state finals in nice. football. Uh, they're going to play Man on Township. I think it's a really good matchup. Oh, yeah. I think it's one of the best matchups. It involves a team from outside of our coverage area, but it's one of the best matchups, I think. Uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing um, I'm looking forward to seeing Township play. Township has been one of those programs uh, of late. So that's where I'm going to be. John. Tell us where you're going to be and also a new wrinkle in our coverage this year. Right, so we talked about this game a little bit ago, Warwick at Cocalico. We will now be trying to do a live shot before every We're going to try game to of the it. week. Yeah. Uh, we We're picked do it. we picked Warwick at Cocalico as our game of the week for week 1. I've already talked to Cocalico coach Brian Stroll when they get off the field at 6:35 and the marching band comes on behind us. I'm going to grab Stroll. We're going to get on camera for just talk about the game and, and what practice has been like and, and preseason and all that stuff and what he anticipates kind of going into that. So check that out on the homepage, Lancaster Online. I'm sure that'll be above our scoreboard right there and uh, talk about some other items kind of happening across the league that night. So that will 635, 636-ish is what I'm aiming for. So fingers crossed everything goes off live. without a hitch. That'll be yes. live. Yes, sir. Live on and the our, page. Probably our Facebook page, LMP, um, LMP Lancaster Online Facebook page as well. And I'm, I'll hand it over to Jeff more than likely after uh, week one, but we're going to try to do that every Friday. Football. Football. <laughs> you ready? We were just sitting here talking about baseball and softball yeah. right. Right. yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, here we go. It's going to be a lot of new stuff, kind of an experimental element to this. But uh, here we go, 37 teams uh -oh. in the LL Football League, and we'll be trying to bring you as much of it as we can. I'm Mike Gross. He's John Wall. He's Jeff Reinhardt. This has been the LL Football Roundtable brought to you by Bobby Rahal Lexus. See you later. <laughs>